And everybody, hello and welcome to Popcorn Culture. My name is Ben Carlin and I am your host. Here with me today is my brother Jay, who will be in every episode. That's me, Jazzy Jay, the uh, you know, the the soon-to-be host of the one true podcast. Wait a second. Yeah. What is this supposed to mean? Are you Just, are you running a coup what? behind my back? Ben, I've been running a coup for about 119 episodes here. <laughs> it hasn't <laughs> worked yet. <laughs> it feels like I mean it feels like it feels like it's it's on the cusp. It's, I've yeah, never it's, felt we're so close. I've never felt less secure yeah. <laughs> in my position in the mm-hmm. state of things yeah. than I do right now. Right. It's, I mean, it's a fickle thing. It's there one day, it's gone the next. I know. It really is like it's <clears> just. I, I would say it's my primary fear that you're gonna lose the the host. <laughs> no. It had, well, I would say let's say let's let's pretend for a second <clears throat> that we're talking about the host trophy and definitely not just the rest of you know, life. Yeah. But yeah, I mean like that, that ongoing fear that like at any day something could happen, the disruptor could occur. Right. You know, and it's like, yeah. it's there's like, like this like constant nagging fear in the back of my mind that like, I'm pretty close to being homeless or something. Oh, you know, <laughs> right. Like, like you're just like one decision away. Right. Like I feel, it feels pretty inevitable that that's just, what's going to end up to me. You know, like, I don't, I don't know. I'm not, a very yeah that like that's like this like it completely irrational fear in my mind i i have to but. tell you though that like there was there was uh in the early days of like my my businessing career before before there was ever even a chance of a popcorn culture podcast uh or even like looking at super carlin brothers as a business venture and yeah. or just like as a project that you and i were doing i do remember out of college, definitely like, you know, paycheck to paycheck, just trying to like, like find that like ignition moment where it was going to be like, cause I was so leaned in to any potential opportunity that could present itself. Like anytime like I met someone new who might have like access to something or had uh, like a skill that like, I felt like maybe like I needed in mm-hmm. order to like, you know, take that next big leap. It was sort of like, I always, I was always like, I'm just one, I'm like one moment away from from that catalyst, from right. like the, from like the go moment where it's like, okay, like this person, like I made contact with this person or this person saw something in me or like I signed this, this deal, you know, yeah. like it was, it was constantly this, this idea of like, like I'm just going to do my best and anybody that I meet, it's like, I'm just going to be as wide a net as I possibly can in terms of opportunity. Right. So like, I, like at no point have I ever had like a very, very, very specific mindset but it was always anything. Right. <laughs> anything could go. And I remember once upon a time, our friend Trey and I uh, met this guy who had this massive pond in his backyard. Like, I was doing a little bit of, like, koi ponding at the time. As one is, does. As one does, yeah. yeah. You know, just an ornamental, <laughs> decorative, you know, like a, maybe like a small, if cupid, I, if, spitting water. It, I, in my experience, it seems to me that owning a pond and starting a YouTube channel fall into a very similar category of like, oh, I'll just do that. Oh, and then you know what I mean? Yes, like, I do. Know sometimes what you mean. people will hear what we do and they're like, oh, maybe I should start a YouTube channel. <laughs> like, okay, <laughs> all right. I feel like you you don't know, but you're being really condescending, and it's actually a tremendous amount of work. And <laughs> that that is the yeah. thing. Yeah, is that it's like it's it's when when they make that comment, it's definitely not that. Um, how do I phrase this here? It's it's not like me saying like, oh, you have no idea. It's more like what you just said was in such a way that like, well, if this guy can do it, then surely I can. Right. Like it's this very, it's, it's all, it somehow ventures into the waters of, of like very unintentionally, uh, maybe mildly disrespectful. Mm -hmm. But that being said, I also have encouraged as many people as I could possibly talk to, to be like, Hey, trust me. Like, you know more about something than you think, than you you think, like be willing to give yourself a shot. So it's not that I would ever like discourage somebody from taking their, their chance. Yeah. But no, I do know, I do know exactly what you're saying, uh, which actually is interesting. Cause I think it pairs nicely with a topic that I had loaded for today. 
Oh, my pond topic. Let me just yeah. close out that okay. really fast so that people aren't like, what was happening with the pond? Anyway, this guy didn't have an ornamental pond. He had like a big pond, like, you know, like a retention pond where all of the water from his land culminated in this giant, like one acre sized whatever. And he wanted to turn an area of it into like a much more ornamental like thing. Yeah. And he was sort of like one of these unique cross sections between like potential client and maybe just potential like business partner Uh because he was sort of like in this exterior landscape architecture world and was maybe like inching towards more like retirement age had been extremely successful had tons of contacts uh and was just very enthusiastic about his pond and so like me and uh, our friend trey were like it, it seemed like we were kind of like is there a possibility that like the three of us could all work together and you're someone who has a lifetime of experience and we're people who are willing to like show up and like just be enthusiastic and be yeah. enthusiastic and, and maybe bring like some of the new new wave like I don't know maybe marketing or, or approaches to it so like we could all be like very symbiotic and I, I remember thinking like this pond this is going to be like my jumping off point. And we we ended up never doing anything with the pond, and that yeah. was that was the end of the story. But <laughs> I remember I was like, "This pond is going to change my life," uh, and it didn't. So anyway, back to YouTube. Um, you recently, uh, in the past couple of weeks, you and I were invited to Virginia Tech, your alma mater. Yes. To uh, give a lecture on basically the process of creating uh, Super Carlin Brothers, and it this particular class that we were talking to was uh, an entrepreneurship class. But not under the school of business. Yeah, it was in like the College of Engineering. Yes. Yeah. So this would almost be like if you were aspiring to be an engineer who maybe someday would want to uh, open their own firm or. Yeah, yeah. It's, exactly. It's like it, it, it's almost <clears throat> like you need like a little bit of knowledge on this topic. <laughs> Right, like the only people who are going to be starting engineering firms are people who are engineers, but we need those people to have some business acumen or they will not succeed. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like it's part of like upholding the the otherwise structure, which engineers are really good at figuring out and yeah. understanding. I honestly wish that we had had a class like that for my major as well. <laughs> that it, it would d- have been very nice. Just like intro to business, you have to take it. It should be mandatory for everyone. Right. It's It, it definitely is one of those uh, where like it, it's a lot more applicable to so many different circumstances because think about how many businesses exist in the world and the chances are what started that business was someone who was passionate about a thing not passionate about business right but then it's also helpful to have some idea how to then stay in business after the fact right um anyway so as we're as we're giving this this like lecture i thought it was very interesting to me because we were sort of telling the Super Carlin Brothers origin story, um, which in very short terms started with you in college, uh, creating a channel that was sort of like an, a creative outlet for you for a little while. Yep. You exited college, entered the real world, the workforce. You were still at this time like living uh, with at home with mom and dad yep. as I was uh, like during this like two year gap working my way out of college so as i got out of college i was like hey let's be roommates you were like hey let's do this youtube channel and it was sort of like okay and that is that is what we did and we we did the brotherhood 2.0 challenge first introduced by the vlog brothers uh which was going to be five videos a week basically talking back and forth at each other for an entire year yes so in case you didn't know how super carlin brothers started that is the story that was it (laughs) it was and what i think was very interesting about going and and talking to people uh, who are in this college environment where everything is very like conceptual, all like most stories you're being given are anecdotes that apply nicely as a way to uh, represent a concept or idea in a textbook. Yeah. It, It has less of like maybe always the subtleties of reality. And what I thought was interesting about it is we were asked this one question that I was like, I don't know how to answer this question. Oh, okay. What would, which question was this? So it came towards the end of our lecture and the someone had raised their hand. And they were like, so how did you guys do it? Like, how did you know it was going to be, it was going to work? And like, or what, what was it about the project that made you so willing to like have faith that it would work? You know, because the initial endeavor that we had was so massive. It was going to be so much work. Yeah. 
Um, like, why would we take it on voluntarily with no guarantee of success? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and it was kind of one of those things where it was like, I don't really know how to answer your question here. Um, because like, because our, our story isn't necessarily just a anecdote built for entrepreneurship. Right. Like it wasn't like we set out to land where we are today and it was yeah I, I, that is it was an interesting question because you're right it wasn't like um like we'll do this and then this will be i think i think the more i've thought about it since the the lecture it's been like well we didn't really set out to become what we are today but the way i think part of like how we were doing it wasn't like we'll keep doing this until it's successful it was like we are gonna like we set out a challenge to complete which was can we have the year-long conversation and never miss a day. Right. And it wasn't a matter of like doing this will lead to this. It was just like complete this and then we will have done it. And then like, it's like running a marathon. It's like, we'll have always done that then. <laughs> yes, know? yes, it's, and yes. it's like you and I are both like um, pretty competitive people and very motivated like challenge wise, I yep. think most of the time. Like uh, so, so many G every story you've heard about the GMA is always just like, I mean, to say we're a group of like, it's, it's a bit, it's a, the whole, it, most of our adventures turn into like a big game of one upsmanship. Like, yes, yeah. who, who can outdo the other, <laughs> who the can most? outdo the other, who the can most? get to the top first. Yeah. yeah. Who can oh, yeah. last outside. You can do it faster, the but I did it first. So, you know, right. Yeah. 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 Whatever. Yeah. Oh, man, who could last the cold the longest? You guys want to hear a real fun game you can play with your friends? Uh, we used to just call it Heat Wave. <laughs> <laughs> All you got to do, here's what you got to do. You get in your car, you're driving somewhere, just put it on maximum heat, and then the first person to complain about the heat loses. And let me tell you what's really not fun about Heat Wave is the entire game, especially <laughs> when you have people who are extremely motivated to win, which all four of us were, which meant that for no reason at all, <laughs> the four of us would drive around almost all the time in a super hot vehicle. It could be 90 degrees awesome. outside, yeah. and we would have the heat turned up all the way to the all max. The way. And all the way. Seat warmers would, on. And we would just all be sitting there just, just sweating. Absolutely. For, for no reason yes. at all. Because nobody was ever going to win because nobody yeah. was ever going to give. Right. And it was just ridiculous. And yeah. the key to success. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is how you do it. That's what we should have said. Yeah. How did we do it? Let me tell you about a game called Heat Wave. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, so this is this is like, I felt like the, the kid in the class who was asking me these questions, I felt like maybe... And not entirely. And this, I wouldn't say this was like extremely forward or out loud or problematic or, or anything like that. But like, I had a feeling that he was like mildly frustrated because we weren't able to like really articulate an answer to this question. So like, you know, I would like sort of give something and be like, yeah, you know, like we, we sort of have this, um, like uh support system with one another, you know, sort of like you don't want to be the person to drop the ball. So you just want to keep going. Right. You know, and it seemed like all these answers were like really not appeasing the question and so like i finally got to the end of it and it was just sort of like i don't know grit determination willpower like yeah like <laughs> endurance like, are you asking us like how we remained motivated or like yeah yeah I yeah think. because i mean a lot of it was like because it was real hard a lot of times a bunch of times didn't want to do it <laughs> yeah. you know it's like um it's like i i don't know yeah you're to... right this particular shooter was, it was as if they had not come across the thought in their in their thinkings that like you could keep going after things got hard <laughs> yes yeah. yeah or or maybe like how how are you like blindly pushing forward without any type of guarantee of inevitable success um and i i think probably one of the things that may have helped us a little bit in the beginning is is maybe a little bit of ignorance which was that like mm. i don't even know that i saw it as us like we were achieving the goal of the one year challenge every day we did it. it. I never really viewed it as a, we have not yet achieved careers from this. And that upsets me deeply. Right. So I'm going to keep doing it. Right. Yeah. 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 So it was, it was like, I, I wasn't failing for it to become a career. I was succeeding at completing the mission. Right. Um, this is like a reframing really. It is a reframing. Yeah. Uh, which is actually that can maybe possibly lead me into my next subject because I think it may 
uh, match really nicely. Um, so my week of the peak this week. Oh, look is, at the peak! I know coming I know, back, coming, coming in back. hot. I know, I know, it's catching on. Um, so my week of the peak, week of the peak this week is a book uh, by James Clear called Atomic Habits. Um, and Alice had been reading it and she recommended it to me. And so over the weekend, uh, I had my day with Addison and I put it in my AirPods and I basically listened to the whole thing in one day. Wow. I know. I was just like burned right through Boom. it. Boom. Atomic Habits. Atomic Habits. And what's really cool about it is that like for me, when we are reading content that maybe has to do with the ty- the subjects that we cover here on yeah. the channel. So like Name of the Wind or, you know, Harry Potter or whatever, um, I'm constantly in some version of like a reread for the purposes of what maybe didn't I catch the first time or like we've already built this theory and now through this lens, how can I possibly find something new? Um, Whenever I read nonfiction for the most part, it's like I finish it and I'm like, okay, thank goodness. It's like I did it. I can say that I read Malcolm Gladwell's Outliers and I can give the example of the hockey players and how they're all born in January. Like how shocking is that? Um, but this was one that as I was reading it, I was like, man, I'm going to reread this. Like this is for one, the narration's great. It's narrated by the author. Oh, Very excellent. Good. Cool. Yep. Um, but <clears throat> a, a lot of the things that were being explained might be things that you're fumbling your way through on your own anyway. Like there are tactics that you're probably coming up with, just through ordinary life but maybe even knowing and and i I do this all the time it's like i find a concept that explains a feeling i've been feeling and then i think it's the most genius thing in the world right um but that's a lot of like you know it's affirmation that like hey this is a great idea doing this is a great idea reframing is one of the things that he talked about that i was like oh this is like a really fascinating way to look at something and the example that he gave was smoking cigarettes or the process of quitting smoking cigarettes And he basically said, like, imagine two people, both of whom just had their last cigarette yesterday, and they're both standing before you and somebody offers them a cigarette. One person might say, no, thanks. I'm trying to quit. And the other person says, no, I'm not a smoker. Right. The person who says, no, I'm not a smoker has reframed the concept in their head. Like the person who's trying to quit, basically what they're saying is like, I'm a smoker, but I'm trying not to be. Right. This person is saying, no. That is not who I am. Right. And because they have like identified with their mission, it, it gives them so much more. They're, they're so much more better equipped for success. Yeah. And so, I mean, that's obviously a small example, but you could apply it to so many different things, you know, in life. Like, it's like, you don't say like, I'm trying to get into running. You just say, I'm a runner, <laughs> you know, like, right. I and, actually have a very specific, yeah, a very similar example to this exact thing. Um, it was way back when I was working at the old, the old concert venue for bingo. Yeah, for bingo. Yeah. And, um, since I'd been working there, I had a, uh, new boss and, uh, since she had been my boss, we, I started going to the rock climbing gym that we used to go to. Okay. Like our friend Paul had invited us. I thought it was like the most fun thing ever. It was like one of those like lifelong things. I was like, Oh my gosh, when I was a kid, I never even dreamed I would be able to be a member of a rock climbing gym. And now I am. And it's the best thing. Like it was like such a, such a moment of fulfillment for my whole life. Oh yeah. I bet. I bet. Yeah. Uh, and so I'd been going, I think for like two months or something. Like I just, it was still pretty new into it. I remember we were talking to someone one day and it came up and I was like, oh, yeah, I'm like, I'm a climber. Like, I just phrased it like that. And I still remember the look she gave me because she had been there. She had known me like pre rock climbing and then post starting. So like from her point of view, like this was very new. Sure. And I remember this just sort of like, OK, yeah, all right. Like I roll like that's an interesting adaptation of the title. Sure. Yeah. And I was like, ah, hmm, hmm. I like I've, I still think about it sometimes like what what's your problem? What was the matter? Like, L- like, why why does it bother you that I have are like pre-identified as a climber? Right. Yeah. Even though I guess maybe because I'd only been doing it for like two months or something. But but uh, the but, thing the thing is is that it became a huge part of yeah. both of our lives. Right. And like I think the local rock climbing gym benefited from you joining the local rock climbing gym in such a massive way because mm-hmm. it ultimately led to like everyone we know being like not just members but like. Like going yeah. four days a week. I have that effect on people. It's yeah. true. It's true. <laughs> it's true. You are. You are. Um, I'm an igniter. Maybe I don't know. I don't know. A kindler. 
I, is that I a like good word. I, I like both of these. <laughs> <laughs> An igniter. That's what J the igniter Carlin. J, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's For better the, than Kindler. Kindler sounds like like small wood. Small. Small. You know, igniter sounds like the fire is erupting. Kindler's like, oh yeah, we've got a little sparks going. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. true. It's true. Mm-hmm. You don't want to be. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. I, so the D and D campaign that we'll probably maybe ever ne- eventually not ever do. Oh, look, now you've said it out loud. I know. <laughs> <laughs> this will be your 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 moniker. Yeah. Your, your, <laughs> the igniter. The igniter. <laughs> so it's like you're you're kind of like uh, what would your what would your class be? Either which way, your your solution to everything is fire. It's fire. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm just, my character is like a bit of a pyromaniac, bit of an arsonist, maybe. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe like, we're towing the line. We don't know. Right, right, right. Yeah. Like, you're, you're just predisposed to like trying to like use fire to attack a dragon, and everybody else right. is like, hey, friend, that's not going to work. It's not going to work, man. I'm like, no, I can blind him. I'll make bright fire. Bright. Oh, yeah. yeah see, really and then it's like all of a sudden, it's like you're see. reframing it a little exactly. bit, making we it more useful. It. Yeah. Right. If you're not thinking about fire the appropriate way, friend. I know, I know. You can't get, get clever, you know? <clears throat> right. That's what being the igniter means. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, anyway, the. Uh, <laughs> where was I with this? Habits, reframing. Reframing. I'm atomic. quitting smoking. I'm not a smoker. All the things. So, <clears throat> one of the other examples that he gave, though, that I, that I immediately took action on, I did this while I was listening. I was like, oh, that's a good idea. And I'm gonna do that. Okay. So okay. Let, let's let me hear it. let me start with some backstory. Okay. Okay. So that was my backing up sound effect. Backing up sound effect. So I forever. Let me go back even further. When we were kids, our grandparents, uh, our mom's parents, had this great big five gallon glass jar right when they walked into their bedroom on the left. Do you remember the glass jar? Um, but, 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 but at which mo- mom's parents' house? Mom's parents', mom's yeah. parents house, yes. Okay, and so I think part of what this was was basically that our grandfather would typically carry cash, and so every time he would go and make a purchase, he would collect coins, and then at the end of the day, he would walk into the bedroom where he would then dispense the coins into this glass jar. Right. And I remember this was kind of like one of those things that I was like, oh, it's so cool. And like over over like years, you know, like we would come for like Christmas every year, come over the summer and stuff. And like you like over years, you were slowly seeing this thing fill up. And then eventually after 10 years of this or whatever, it was the case that they like went and they finally cashed in uh, this giant glass jar. And it was like thousands of dollars. Wow. You know, and it was yeah. the type of thing where like to me as someone look, I aspired to accidentally save thousands of dollars right in this very like passive approach where you're, like, you're not even paying. it's it's change it's change out of your pocket at the right. end of the day and then one day you're like oh man look at this we want to go on a cruise and i have thousands of dollars right here to pay for it with like how amazing is it i just stumbled on wealth that i didn't even know i had and so like forever this has always been the type of thing where it's like i always loved the thought of stashing the money almost accidentally accidentally building wealth right um and so as i've gotten older i have used a coin jar before i have i have a i think the gma actually gave it to me for my birthday many years ago but it was a patron bottle okay i think it was a customary 21st birthday <gasps> gift in the GMA. oh yes you're right you guys got me a bottle of patron as well yes yep um so i still have the bottle and I would always put my change in it. And same thing. It was kind of like, oh, like when vacation rolls around, I'm going to have like my, like my, my store, right. you know, my, my, my coinage. Um, but realistically, for me, the real problem is, is that like I think of every single thing I own as an asset, uh-huh. basically. Yeah. So like all the, all the time and always anything, like even when I go and buy like a, a product, a tool, um, you know, whatever the case may be, I am always kind of like, before I purchase anything, I'm like, does this hold resale value? Like, could I resell this in the future if I needed to? Uh-huh. And so I will typically like spend a little bit extra in order to get the brand that holds value or something. Right. So that if that day ever comes, it's like, it's like I used to need a Honda generator for our tailgates. Oh, is this something you're going to reframe? Well, possibly. Okay. Possibly. So anyway, um, I might have like the Sonda generator and it'd be the type of thing where we used to use it for tailgates and now I don't really need it for tailgates because we haven't really done tailgates. Then can I tell you that one of my finest um, mechanical moments in life 
was tailgating with the Honda generator and, when you and we couldn't start it. And I was like, why don't we turn it over for like 10 seconds, let the gas move around and turn it back over. And it totally worked. Man, I think I could have. I, it didn't matter who won that football game. Yeah, you, <laughs> I, was, I won a life that I'll day. I'll tell my kids I about this my, one day. Guys, I got it. Uh, that's amazing. It's, it's like, anybody need to start a generator? generator? Anybody else around? I can. Anyone else? I have some tips that will help. Igniter over here. Right, yes. Don't light it on fire. <laughs> Bad idea. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well done. Yeah. Well done. Thank you. Party. Anyway, go ahead. I just wanted to slip that in. I like to bring it up whenever I can. It's, it's not often. <laughs> right. No, it's absolutely perfect. Um, so my problem is, though, is that I think of everything as an asset. So if I need to do something and I'm like, well, I don't want to like take from my actual like you know savings or whatever, but I do want to do this new thing. It's like, okay, well, I'll just sell that old thing. Right. Uh, and so similarly with my Patron jar of coinage uh for one i don't usually carry cash that often so I, i'm i'm contributing to it far less than our grandfather who always uses cash would have contributed to it um but it would also be the case that like i would be getting ready to go on vacation and be like oh yeah i'll go grab the patron draw this will be perfect i'll do like the coin exchange or whatever at the bank and it'll be great and i'd usually walk away with like 43 dollars, and it's like well that'll pay for tolls yeah, <laughs> you know? but but it's like it's really not that magical. Like I forgot, it wasn't boom. I forgot I had yeah. that money. So as I've gotten older, one of the things that I tried to do this with, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna digitize it. I'm gonna enter. I'm gonna enter the new age. Yeah, there is a there's an, a program called Acorns. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking of. Because the problem with the change thing is that no, we don't. I don't. I don't spend cash almost ever mm -hmm. anymore. Um, and. I believe in when uh, when we were growing up, I did a very similar thing. Like anything I had change, I would just dump it in. Like I had this big crayon bank for a very long time. I remember that. Yeah, and I was always like just putting stuff in it, and then eventually I cashed it out. But then like when <clears throat> I was in college, like I refused to have a job in college. Like I just really didn't want to have like a job to have money. But the problem was then I just didn't have money, sure. right? <clears throat> yep, yep. So during the summer when I would work at Panera, bingo. Um, I would, every time I got my paycheck, I would like go cash it and I would come home and I would just like fold up a 20 from it and put it in this different bank I had. It was a Tootsie Roll bank. I remember that one too. Yeah, had yeah. that one. And then my plan was, then I would just put the rest in my wallet and just sort of use it as my spending money. But I would always put that in there because I knew eventually in the next semester I would run out of spending cash and then I would break into that. So it was like my reserves. Sure. And it was amazing how well it would work every time. It would be like, oh, out. Well, great news. I've got... 100 extra dollars you know you know in my reserve <laughs> and it was like and guess what i'm gonna stretch this for seven more weeks and i like you know i guess i would but <laughs> yeah well and i mean i i think that you have one way or another always been really quite fantastic with money like you've always been very like conservative mm. from like with your spending and stuff and well, I, thank you i feel like if there was ever somebody who would accidentally just become wealthy it's probably you well see this is the thing right because like i the the amount i handle cash anymore is like so little so anytime i find myself with cash i luke now has a piggy bank in his room which is like become the collection zone so like i'm so excited if i happen upon like three quarters i'm like i can put this in luke's piggy bank oh that's you awesome know? it's so exciting but then every now and then i'll get this like i'll get really excited i get very excited about the piggy bank because i'm like in my mind he's not going to open he's we're not going to crack it open until he's like 18 or something and, sure and who knows what's going to be in there by then and i'm always like man this is such a long combo what if i just like what if i just occasionally every now and then i just slip like a hundred bucks in there you oh. know you know and then it's just like whoa what a giant boost so yeah i mean you're you were on the exact oh, okay. path as me nice okay like the exact same thing <laughs> yeah so 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 like with my with my acorns account basically what acorns does is that if you swipe your card you can uh round like up round up yeah. and then it will just toss the extra cents into a savings account and then you can also set it up to do like an auto draft so that like you know once every paycheck you move a certain amount of money into it and so historically i have used acorns myself as a way to just sort of like again attempt to like hide money from myself right but most of the time what will happen is that something will come up or an event will happen or i'll be like ooh, like i need i need that money and it'll be it'll have like accumulate to like a few hundred dollars and i'm like okay i'm gonna go grab it like i'll just right. take the acorns out no problem but then again i didn't accidentally hide wealth from myself Not hiding it from yourself well enough i know and so as as i'm like going through this like this book listening to it and like the tactics and stuff involved it's sort of talking about like you know 
removing social media apps from your phone or whatever as a way to just be like, you could still reinstall them if you want to, but it adds an extra step. And you might not want to do the extra step. And so that might be... Thing. Uninstall the Acorn app? Yes. Yes. So what I did... So it's still working. You just can't see it now. Exactly. Yeah. So so what I did, because the big thing I've always I wanted to do since since Addison was born was basically start a savings account for her for her first car. Yeah. Um, oh, so, fun. Yeah. So that like someday it would come to pass that it, you know she would turn 16 or whatever and it would be like okay let's go use the money that we saved specifically for your car that i started forever ago and it's like this is the accidental wealth money this is what it is for this is what i want to do but i also don't want it to be the case that you know she's 8 and really into ice hockey and wants like a brand new hockey stick and it's like well we'll just go grab it from your acorns account you know and like deplenish it so i'm like gotta gotta like prevent that from happening right so what i did was i went set up a auto deposit for 50 dollars a month like the day after we get paid or whatever so it's just like paid boom in gone right uh, and then i deleted the app nice and i was like there we go <laughs> I, I was like there we go I, I went to my password manager and was like you know put a whole yeah. bunch of notes around it and like stars and stuff and was like don't forget about this um right. which i probably won't do anyway right but that being said you know it's it's one of those things if you've never heard of acorns we can we can put a uh, a link to it <laughs> not and, sponsored not sponsored <laughs> but we can you know it, i think it's a it's a handy it's a handy thing so we'll put it in the show notes right um so we get 50 bucks every paycheck so you're putting like 300 bucks a year in there, right? Uh, 600. No, did I right. do the math wrong? 600? Yes, right. 600. My bad. Yes, yes correct. So yeah. I, I think if the, I did the, I, when I did the math, it sounded like by her 16th birthday, there would be about $9,000. It also it does accrue interest. Oh. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully that will yield something something so they have like ninety one hundred dollars <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> raking it in raking it in um <clears throat> this is this is honestly though this is how like super duper wealthy people are doing it right they're like oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. you got a hundred dollars on nine thousand bucks all right imagine though imagine though you had a billion dollars and then you have just a tiny amount of interest there you go boom you're set for another 50 years every year so yes you're great yes yeah this is this is this is like the whole idea behind uh, wealth accumulation for retirement is you're basically just trying to put enough money away so that when you retire, you can live off the interest of that. Like you're not, you're not eventually just going to be like, okay, I put a hundred thousand dollars in my bank account. Going to go withdraw that. See how long it lasts me. Right. The, the, the hope is to live off of the, yeah. you know, whatever. Yeah. Talk to a financial consultant. Yeah. <laughs> Not me. Don't listen to us. <laughs> don't listen We're to just me. trying to hide money from ourselves. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know if this is a, a promotable tactic, yeah. but. Yeah. Well, so yeah, this is coming back to all the like selling stuff and things. Me and uh, GMA member Michael Austin have been in the world's slowest negotiation for him to buy from me, my weed whacker and lawnmower. <laughs> I love that we're talking about this because Mike <laughs> regularly <laughs> listens to the pop. So he's 100% hearing these words right now. Yeah. Well, so, yeah, I think he asked me like three weeks ago and I was like, yeah. I was like trying to do the math in my head. I'm like, okay, you can definitely have the lawnmower because that hasn't been used in like three years. Okay. The weed whacker, I think I've used like once since I've moved, but do I need it? I was like really hesitant in my mind, like I might need it again. And I'm like, no, just just cut the cord, Jonathan. You don't you don't you don't need the weed whacker. And then I'm like, all right, so how much should I sell it for? Because they were not like inexpensive items, but also just taking up space in my house. I was like, I'm, I don't even mind just being paid for the act of removing the items from my house. Like that's Ooh. a huge load off myself. But both of them probably require minor repairs or at least some sort of inspection to get up to speed as well. So I'm like trying to do all these discounts. It's like plus Mike's one of like my best friends ever, so I should probably make it really good. Anyway. <laughs> Where, where, how do I care about the friend's family discount? Yeah. I need an algorithm. I, know, is what I, know, I really like, need. Gotta figure this out. What's what is a reasonable price to ask for my slightly broken, unused <laughs> <laughs> appliances <laughs> to my friend? So the other day he comes in, and I like give him a price, and he's like, like prepared. He is like, whatever you say, I'm gonna give you a down payment on whatever it is. So he like. Uh, he like hands me two one hundred dollar bills just out of his pocket, and I'm like, well now I now I'm like I wish you just like Venmo it to me because now what am I gonna? This is basically nothing. What is this? You're like how am I ever gonna use this? <laughs> Do people like, still yeah, use now paper like, money? Now I have to now I have to deal with the cash in some way, which is not to say that it's not it's obviously you know real money. Um, but so then I then yeah I started thinking I'm like what if though what if I just put what if I just put it in the piggy bank? I was hoping this is, where this is going. I'm like like it's like yeah, yeah, you know what? This is great. I get to put money in the piggy bank and the lawnmower's going to be gone. 
this is fantastic. Is that what <laughs> because, you did? Well, I haven't done it yet, but I think I think it is what I'm going to do. Oh, I like this plan. I know, I know. I can't, like, because this is the sort of thing, like, Luke also has, like, no idea that every now and then if I just have, like, spare cash, I'll just throw it in there. So yeah, I can't imagine the point when he's, like, 18 and he opens it and he thinks it's all just change and there happens to just be, like extra large sums in there as well right i mean imagine your eight has be so fun you might just like it, it, like whatever you were thinking was in there it just like adds up all of a sudden somehow it will be <laughs> the case that i will have a uh interesting crewing investment portfolio with an auto draft and you will have a ceramic piggy, piggy bank yeah and i have a feeling luke's gonna be able to buy a nicer first car <laughs> <laughs> That would be that would blow my mind. I don't think I put that much in there. But here's the other thing: is that like I like it 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 occurs to me that at some point perhaps Luke himself will start con- like uh, contributing whatever funds he has to the piggy bank. Yes. You know, I can imagine a situation if he's anything like I was when a child, him getting his birthday money and being like, "I'm gonna save it." You yeah. know, and just be like, "I'm just gonna." squirrel this away do you think that's what he will do i have no idea i have no idea it is going to be fascinating to me to watch this unfold yeah because i feel like your your approach to birthday money i think i think was atypical well, I, it is, it is, I feel like it's some, I, this is like one of those things that like blows my mind as a parent, but like, I feel like at one point there must have, I think there was like a single conversation I had with mom at one point where she was just like, you should save your money. And so I was just like, okay. And it <laughs> yeah. was just like, got it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yeah. I'm doing it. Uh, yeah. And then, uh, cause yeah, well, I used to, the only other way I made money as a kid was just by mowing yard, mowing like our yard and then our, uh, neighbor's yard. And dad, which were, I mean, our neighbor's yard was bigger. It was not four times bigger, but dad would pay me $5 for our entire lawn in Rocky Mountain. Our neighbor would pay me $20 for her lawn in Rocky Lot. So I was raking in about 25 bucks a week. I don't want to brag or anything. It's pretty um, huge. Pretty, pretty huge. huge. Pretty huge when you're like a little kid. If you'd put those um, into a low yield investment portfolio, think about where you'd be today. Well, I'll tell you, I put them into a very low yield um, the purple wallet with a cow on it. I remember the purple <laughs> wallet with a cow. Velcro. Velcro. Had a, had a, uh, yeah. Can you, I, I mean, think for a second, people, this wallet had a pouch for change to go inside. Just imagine, yes. Of the wallet. Imagine, imagine a canvas, a purple canvas wallet with a cow on it what there was the art who's the artist in vermont who does the cows woody oh you something. hadn't asked me i would have known <clears throat> honestly i used to have a t-shirt from this same artist yeah. that had the word holy above it and then it yeah. had a cow yeah that same it. cow yeah more or less there's an artist in vermont who's famous for his like cow prints i have to sure it's it like uh yeah okay we're gonna we're gonna get a woody we're jackson get, woody jackson sounds right but i'm also that might be some other Woody. Uh, let's see. Let's see here. Woody Cow Art Vermont. We're looking. We're looking. These sound right. Woody Jackson. Hang on. Are we on to it? I think we're on. I think we're on to it. Yes. Woody Jackson. Man. So yeah, I had a I had a canvas purple wallet that adhered to itself via Velcro with a Woody Jackson cow on it. And that was my childhood wallet. And that's where I would, um, it was my very low yield investment. <laughs> <laughs> very, very low yield. Portfolio. Mom had, mom had to calculate the interest. Calculate. Sl- calculate yes. it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Corny joke alert. Boom. That's it. Brought to you today by <clears throat> one J the Igniter Carlin. Can I tell you that once upon a time, when I was working at uh, the concert venue, yes. <laughs> the, Ber- the Berglund Center, we were hosting um, <clears throat> Grace Potter, the musical artist. Okay, <clears throat> she is like um, does like folk music and stuff. She's very good singer, very good. She was coming to the theater, and she is like part of her fame is that like she is very from Vermont. Okay, right. So like that that is a big part of like who she is. She is from the state of Vermont, and she was coming there, and I knew that, and like we you know we went to Vermont all the time when we were kids. And I knew, I knew about the cows, right? I was like, people in Vermont love the cows. Sure. They love the Woody Jackson cows. And so I was like, okay, okay. We always had to come up with these artist gift ideas. And so my idea was to make a poster with one of the cows on them that said, 
that was like a joke on your shirt. It said holy, and then it was a picture of the cow and said it's Grace P. Utter instead of Potter. Nice. Yes. So this was my this was my joke. And our, this was my gift for the artist. Amazing. And yeah, it is amazing. But at the same time, you're sort of calling Grace Potter a, like you like if you don't get it, you might be calling Grace Potter a cow, which would be right. inaccurate. Which yeah, would be yeah. which would be very inaccurate, um, <clears throat> and would probably be very insulting. <laughs> sure, <laughs> yeah. you're the wrong person. But and so I remember having it and. Uh, typically like when the artist comes, you know, the, the GM and the uh, assistant general manager would be the ones who like present the gift or whatever. And they go do a picture and like our AGM absolutely thought this was the dumbest gift ever. Like I could tell he was extremely worried about it. He had no faith in it at all. Cause the moment came and he's like, you go, you go do it. And I was like, and then, it, then it made me like his lack of confidence, like filled me with dread. Oh yeah. And so like, and then all of a sudden there's this like weird spotlight and I'm sitting there holding this thing and I have to turn it around and I turned it around and she loved it. She no. immediately got it. She's like, is that one of the cows? And, and then, and then I was the, like the hero of the moment. I was like, I told you, I knew it. So, Igniter. Igniter. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, that was my that was my story of giving Grace Potter a poster of a cow. <laughs> I have to tell you that when when you had this job, yeah. this was the this was the number one thing that you did that I was so jealous of. What coming up with the gifts? Yes, I hated it. It was oh, terrible. No way. Yeah, I, man, because you guys did so many clever <clears throat> things. You gave a f- so we have an Orvis store yeah. here in Roanoke, and I believe you gave. Brad Paisley. Brad Paisley, mm-hmm. a fly rod with his name on it. Uh, we did. It was not associated with the Orvis store at all. Oh, though. Okay. This was this ended up being yeah that was a pretty cool one. It was one of the earlier ones. We had an intern at the time um, named Tyler, and he just had a friend who made custom fly rods. What? And who I, does that? I know. I have no idea. I have no idea. So I was like, because I didn't like doing it. I was like Tyler, try and look up some things that Brad Paisley is interested in, so maybe we can come up with a cool gift. Uh-huh. And so he was like. He found out those into fishing, and then he had a friend who made these fishing rods. And it turns out, it's like one of these people. It's like if yeah, because if you're into making custom fly rods, it's probably like a very like expensive endeavor, right? And so he was like, yeah, you know, he called him and was like, "Could you make one for Brad Pays?" And he was like, "Absolutely, I could." You know, like how cool would that be? Amazing. So uh, he made it, and then we had it like put like you know. Um, Roanoke Civic Center. That was before the building was renamed, and like the date, and you know the name of the tour on it and stuff, and. Uh, you could tell when it, you know we came time to do the artist gift. Um, uh, you know we're typically last in line, and basically at every venue Brad goes to, you know he has this exact same interaction where it's like, oh yeah, I got to post for the picture with the people who run the venue, whatever. Right. And we brought out the fly rod, and he was like stunned, like no one had ever gotten him a fly rod. Right. And he was like, well, now wait a minute, now wait a minute, <laughs> this <laughs> is actually kind of cool. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, that is amazing. So that was pretty good. <clears throat> right. Yeah, because I mean this guy's basically on tour, going and doing this exact same, like. This, like series of steps yeah every week multiple right. times a week yes you know so to him it's probably like okay you know mm-hmm. like i mean not that like gifts i'm sure that, that they're ever like you know upset that somebody's giving them a gift but i'm sure they also know it's like part of it's the like protocol. it's like all part of this like unspoken rules of like touring because it's like you it's like you have to give them a gift like thanks for coming but like the real reason the venue wants to take the to get you a gift is so that they can take a picture so they can submit the picture to like venues today or something and then you'll you'll have your picture in the magazine with the artist saying look this artist came here and sold out or whatever like this is like the long game right you know for the reason behind the gift is so you can have your picture in the magazines and that's like advertising to other tours to come to your venue and it's like this this is all sort of the real the real truth behind it all it's like no one really expects the artist to one like keep the gift or truly like you know take it home and admire it you know right. it's like, <laughs> like 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 do they all have like a shelf at home where it's just yeah like, i oh. guarantee you 99 percent of these things are immediately disposed of or left at the venue sure or, you know or sure. you know given out to people on, on the tour so does that mean that grace potter doesn't have yeah, she might not it might have been left at the venue anyway i don't know um i like to think <clears throat> that it's on her living room wall yeah <laughs> That's what I like to think. Yeah, I somehow doubt it. I somehow doubt it. But um, yeah, that's the that's the truth behind the the venue gift. I love it. You ready yeah. for transition? Let's do it. 
Ben, I have a question for you. Okay. Okay. I have an answer for you, probably. All right. Ready? I think this is going to be my no, my new go-to conversation starter uh, with new people. Are you ready? Okay. And I want to know your answer to it. I'm so nervous. What's your favorite tree? <gasps> not not like species of tree, like specific tree that you, you know. That I know. That you know. Or maybe wow. maybe not even that you know. Maybe you have a favorite tree that's like in South America that you just admire because of its you know many features. But do you have a favorite tree? And now I'm confused <laughs> by the question. So the tree could exist like like someone <clears throat> conceivably could say like Joshua tree. Yeah, right. That could be a favorite tree. Like, like if I asked you your favorite bridge, it could be a bridge you drive across every day for work, or it could be the Golden Gate Bridge. You know. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I see. So, but, <clears throat> but it, so it's not a species of tree. It is a specific tree. Yeah. But it's just okay if it's not if you don't have like a direct like it's not like in your yard. Right. Yeah. It could be. It could be. Yeah. It could be in your yard. Hold on. Let me let me give this a hard ponder because okay. I you know it's I do <clears throat> I appreciate trees. Yeah. More. I I don't want to say more than the next guy, but like I do like a good tree. Well, there's nothing like a good tree. Not, nothing like a good tree. Right. <laughs> Trees are great. Trees are everywhere. Okay. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Think, Ben. I feel like there's a tree that I do admire. Okay. While you think, I can tell you about my favorite tree. Please do. Please yeah. do. Okay. So my favorite tree is actually in my next door neighbor's backyard. Wow. Yeah. Yes. I believe the species is, it's one of, I think it's a cherry blossom. Okay. So it does. So if you don't know the cherry blossom, like there's these giant festivals in Japan every year yeah. where they all blossom at the exact same time. But what's unique about the trees is that they only blossom for like one week. Okay. So it's like they're in bloom for one week. They have these awesome pink petals. It looks super cool. And then they're gone again. You have to like wait all year. Wow. So anyway, I'm thinking about it right now because we are at the point of the year where my neighbor's tree is about out to bloom and i love it it's like my favorite time to be on the deck and look look at the tree <laughs> i almost wish that you could like somehow set up a time lapse with like a phone or something like over yeah. several days to watch it come i into know bloom. right now because right now it's like you can tell it's very close like all the blooms are there they're all white right now they haven't turned pink okay so i feel like it's very very close to happening okay and um yeah i'm i, I set up a time lapse this morning it's also very nice because the sunrise happens right behind the tree in okay. the morning so and we we where we live is like fantastic sunrise country yeah so yeah, that's true. when the sun is coming up i can see the sunrise it normally has those like cotton candy clouds and there's the tree and another great feature of the tree is that it's not in my yard so i get all the enjoyment of looking at it without having to deal with any of the maintenance of it <laughs> Which is another real winning point of this tree. Is but it, if something ever happens to it, I'm going to be like genuinely upset. That's the most J Igniter Carlin yeah. <laughs> comment I've ever heard. <laughs> I like to enjoy it from afar. Yeah, but uh, not too far. Like I'm about as close as I can be. Right. I got a front row seat yeah. to this tree. Exactly. But you, tree. but you would not plant this tree in your own backyard so that you could have further enjoyment. No, nah, that would just take up room. No. I'm I'm hesitant to put a swing set in my backyard because I'm like, this is gonna be this is gonna be room to run around. I'm like, right? Yeah. You know? <laughs> do, you, do you find that often you get home from work and just go, just go frolic, <laughs> just run around in the backyard? Yeah, you should, you well, should. the kids do. No, I'm imagining <laughs> you doing this solo now. No, just like doing like the airplane, just like. Whee! Yeah, not not by myself, but if you think me and Luke and Nick and Nate weren't just literally running in circles in the backyard this past weekend, you'd be wrong. Okay, yeah. okay, I love it, I love it. That, and that makes me very excited for, for activities with Addison. Yeah. Man, I'm trying so hard to think of my favorite tree, because mm -hmm. I feel like there are a many. Yeah. Um, because sometimes I feel like, like one of the big things that I've wanted to do since I bought my land is be able to convert those trees into features within the property. Mm -hmm. So I, I think I've talked in, in a previous episode some time ago now about wanting to buy my own sawmill yeah. so that I could actually like maybe like take a tree down specifically for building purposes and then be able to like turn that tree, like the wood from the tree into things like that could be just really, really, really neat. Like I've, um, I've imagined happening, having like a, a swing, for example, that just, goes up like a hundred feet in the air, like the ropes come down like a hundred oh, feet. Okay, yeah. And it's just like a swing that like that that has unlimited potential. <laughs> it's like an infinite swing. Right. And I'm very excited about that. And so I don't know that I could point to the specific tree that that 
seat will come from mm-hmm. but it's very important to me that it happens that you have the the big swing that i have the big swing yeah i've also thought this was another this was another pondering that i don't want to offer any false promises to anybody on but i do think it would be kind of fun is so like our our coffee company carlin brothers coffee i feel like has slowly morphed a little bit uh from simply just a coffee company to like i'm, I'm always hesitant to call it like a lifestyle brand mm-hmm. because it's like i don't know that we have quite enough stuff to, to, to fill ben. that cu- to fill Yet that ben. cup we did just launch <clears throat> these awesome buttered pancake butterscotch candles here i have to tell you that the <laughs> sitting right not, here available at collinboscoffee.com this was not intended to be an ad but i i have to tell you guys that of all the candles that we have made and i love all of them this one the smell the throw i think the scent throw that comes off is that it, what it's called i believe the so the throw the throw that is fantastic yeah right yes. it's massive like you can light this thing for like 10 minutes blow it out and your whole room will continue to smell of this scent of this flavor yeah. for like like 30s of minutes i know i've been very impressed with this one in particular because i'm not one who typically likes like a sweeter candle yeah at all but this one in particular it like even i'm sitting right next to it it's not bothering me at all it it smells like when you wake up in your room upstairs and someone downstairs is making pancakes you're right like that's what it smells like that it smells a- like pancakes are like three rooms away yeah it's like it's like you've been awoken by pancakes that is the scent yeah i've been very impressed with it and uh, it also has a signature charm i'm not just saying that because i you know i think you should buy candles um but it also fun fun thing about all of our candles they also have secret charms in them they do they're yes. really neat it's really fun um oh actually this uh, anyway go ahead it, uh, um <coughs> oh yeah i'm back i'm back trees trees so um through my vlog uh like one of the things i like to do projects in case you've never watched it before so like if you've ever heard about any of my home projects um they are now typically documented in vlog form and uh come out you know on the weekends and stuff uh but one of the things that i was thinking the other day would be really fun to do as it's just like an ongoing way to have like a very exclusive something uh would be making cutting boards oh which is just a very it's it's a fairly basic you know on the whole activity for like woodworking this is I, that is to say i haven't made one since wood shop in high school mm-hmm. um but I feel like as I start going and sort of like doing some tinkering on the land, breaking some of the wood down, drying it, doing all those things, I was like, it would be really cool if just like throughout the year I could make like 25 cutting boards and then just have them available like at Christmas and they'll have like a cool like, you know, brand kind of stuck yeah. on them and stuff, you know, like, would that be fun? That'd be fun. I would take a custom cutting board. I always need a reason to do things. I can't yeah. just do it. Right. You know, like. Because what am I going to do with 25, 25 cutting boards? I mean, Etsy, I guess. I don't know. That's I guess that's true. But this yeah. this feels much more personal. Because okay. the, the, I feel like anybody at home might be like, I actually know the guy who made this. Right? It would be, be good because I the, I find that I've got like, I don't, how many cutting boards do you own at your house? Three. Three? Yeah. Okay. I've probably got like six or something. Six. Wow. What it's a way too. I know. They're like all different sizes and I feel like all different materials. Some of them have warped and stuff. And I feel like it's maybe the sort of thing that if you just constantly replaced them, it'd be very nice. And sure. just like, but it's like a cutting board by nature is like very durable. So it doesn't feel like it ever really needs replacing. Mm-hmm, it's mm-hmm. like the point is to just keep cutting on it. That's what it's there for. Right. But like I wouldn't mind, but some of them get like warp and like I hate when they get like, they start to like spin on the table you oh, ever have yeah, that that's like a know. very bad specifically bad feature for a cutting board because you don't want to press down on something with something sharp and have it spin in the wrong direction or something it does feel like a liability <clears throat> yeah I should just get to, rid of that one I'll keep in mind that yeah not yeah. spinning but it occurs to me that if you just refreshed my cutting board every year I could just throw out the old one and then just have a, a brand new one every year so I could you could be like on a subscription plan to Ben's cutting boards right and for once free you, once you, for free yeah. well, you're my brother yeah <laughs> so, so once a year I'd just be like New cutting board. Yeah. You can throw the other one out now. Right. I'll just sell the other one on Etsy myself, and then I'll put it in Luke's piggy bank. It'll be great. <laughs> Ben's old cutting board. <laughs> Ben's old sale. cutting board. That's right. Oh, ben man. made it. I used it. You can have it. <laughs> Feature, featured in this blog where Beth made chili. That's right. Woo! I know. Comes fantastic. with a certificate of authenticity. That's right. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm sure people are lining up for you scouting boards. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> it's all just marketing, man. It's all just marketing. It's like, you know what? <clears throat> this is what I always think. I, this, man, I always think this about hotels. It's like, I bet you couldn't, I bet you couldn't pay someone to take a used mattress from you. Uh -huh. You know, like, but I, on the other side of things, like, Hotels are nothing but renting used mattresses. That's true. Right? It's like you're paying tremendous amount of money on the nightly to rent a used mattress. Although they are they are rather spectacular mattresses. I have yeah, I, I have mean, true. Like coveted the <clears throat> the like Marriott whatever their bed is. I know that they actually they have like a store you can like buy the Marriott bed. Yeah, I aspire. To right own, to own the Marriott the bed. Marriott bed. Yeah. And yeah, and it's it's one of those things where I bought my current bed like eight years ago, which means that it's probably like starting to get on its like final fumes. Yeah. And uh, I, it's it's kind of like occurred to me, it's like, have I reached the stage of life where I can buy the Marriott bed? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or because yeah, you're in like a weird it's like a weird position where it's like if you buy yourself like a bedroom set elsewhere, then it'll probably be quite an investment in its own right. And then it would be like well, do I need to wait for this to wear out? Or would it be, am I setting myself even further back on the Marriott bed? Right. 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 And to be clear, when I say the Marriott bed, I don't mean the bed frame. I just, I do just mean the... Like the mattress and bedding. Yes, okay. exactly. Those things. Which this, I mean, it, it, it's like one of those things that I think sneaks up on you in life too. Because there's, it's like, I remember buying my first ever mattress when I went to college and it was $300 and I was so proud of it. Like, it was like... In a way that I think probably nobody else cared, but, like, I had, like, done this thing that, like, it felt like such a big deal to me. Yeah. Like, almost the point where I feel like... <laughs> Not I don't, this. This is not intended in any way, shape, or form to be inappropriate. But like, I almost feel like if I were, was at my apartment and I was like, I had like a friend over or a girl that I was trying to date. I feel like I'd be like, I bought my own mattress. <laughs> like, like this would not be like an invitation to the mattress. It would just be like, check this out. Look, look at my accomplishments. Right. It's a merit badge of life. Right. <laughs> I own my own mattress. Ba boom. Wow. All right, Ben. This, I, there's a note in the notes here that says, people keep being surprised by my perspective on reality TV, which made me surprised that it wasn't what we were all doing. So now I'm curious, what's your perspective on reality TV? Well, okay. <laughs> so I feel like in the past couple of months, I have, I have found myself in consumption of some prime <coughs> reality TV. Yeah. Um, there is the TV show on Netflix called Love is Blind. Great show. just had its second season. Way better than The Bachelor. It is better than The Bachelor. Yeah. I have to say, and I have enjoyed The Bachelor for many years now, and I've, I've watched probably every season of The Bachelor for many years now. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was really ready for this season to be over. I'm getting worn out on this show. It was rather exhausting. Rather exhausting. It was, it was like, all right, oh, man, I don't know if like, we, I don't know if we on, keep dude. doing this. And it's, <coughs> like we're, it's like, I don't know if we're taking it too seriously or not seriously enough. It feels something about it's just not right. What's that right is that they present everything about the show markets itself as if it's trying to help some person find love and they're just not they're just not really trying to do that they're just like hey if that happens great as long as people watched we don't care so and the thing is though is that people want to watch the dumpster fire they i know they don't want to watch they don't want to watch it like be i complain about it but then if there's ever just like a meaningful loving date where they're like talking about important things i'm just like boring <laughs> Don't care. Give uh, me back to the crazy people, and then the crazy people are back, and I'm like, why don't they get rid of the crazy people? And then, and then I just, I don't know why I watch it at all. Sometimes <laughs> that's a, a, all of those <coughs> completely fair points. Yeah, okay, completely fair points. No, so I, I feel like I tend to have this perspective on the people who are on the shows because um, usually they inevitably do something that is questionable um and I, I it's like so much of like what i take in like i feel like what reality tv gives you in like a very unexpected way is like just a lot of data about people's life experiences and so it's like for me it's always very interesting to see like what has led this person 
to have these sets of emotions Mm -hmm. and like i i think that it has made it just so apparent like how big a deal like insecurity might be in your like dating career and you know it's it's fascinating because you do learn the backstories of a lot of these people and so often like that's a big part of it to me is like you know nobody was ever I don't know. I guess I tend to think nobody's ever born bad. Like, you know, there's there's no such thing as like a bad egg. You know, it's just sort of like right. people's life experiences are what have shaped them. <clears throat> right. And so I think my like a lot of times when I'm watching it, what I'm watching is like maybe at times the opportunity for some of these people to like have some growth, you know? Right. Or, or maybe it's even in- in- interesting to me because I haven't had many of these life experiences, but it exposes me just to them in some capacity and mm-hmm. i'm seeing how they are impacted by those things right um so i, th- I think the, the surprise most often is maybe something along the lines of like you have a lot of empathy for someone who decided to go on a reality tv show and and it's like maybe that just is where my head's at with it mm-hmm. is it's like i'm i'm not quick to fault maybe mm. like it's like I, I feel like maybe I can I can understand maybe even the the compulsion to go on a reality TV dating show in the first place probably has like there's there's something you can even learn about that personality. Sure. So I can see that. Yeah. So what are you, your surprise that other people aren't watching reality TV to learn about <laughs> other people's point of view? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I think that's probably it. Like, I think that that is like the thing that is most fascinating to me, and it's I mean, because you also get to see like you get to see conflict, um, sort of like an exponent on it, but then you can also see the various ways that people handle conflict, which I think can always be very interesting. Yeah. Um, because it's it's like your it, it's easy to be critical. I mean, like sometimes I even go back to like when we played um mario kart on our gaming channel and, yeah like, we would attempt to give life advice while also attempting to win the game uh while also being very aware of the fact that we are like recording ourselves for a show that some people will listen to right and so like on, on the one hand you know you've got the task of being good at the game in in front of you and, and trying to be competitive with one another in the room uh you also are trying to you know think critically about the question that somebody has asked you and like provide some kind of meaningful uh response that is somewhat well balanced and not just reckless words yeah um and also then knowing that you have the magnifying glass that is the uh almost in perpetuity existence of these words now being like recorded and posted to the interweb meaning like you need to you need to have like that layer of uh care and attention to making sure that like you're handling your steps as as best you can Uh you know so that you're not just like dropping hot takes left right Right. center which is not to say that we haven't ever you know done that but it's the you know you're you're trying to you're trying to balance all these thoughts and so a lot of times and avoid blue shells and avoid blue shells exactly which usually hit me because you're so far ahead yeah and i'm like sort of like the the like second place spot that like is far (coughs) back from you which means i just get everything rained on mm, me sorry about that that's okay yeah, yeah. i got used to it but um so sometimes i actually feel like i i might even feel the same way about like the tv show survivor you know it's like you you could be watching these people attempt to navigate very complicated like uh social political environments while also being starved exhausted you know surviving the elements cold whatever the case may be. Right. And so sometimes I'm actually very impressed with how well these people are able to like maintain being articulate, Yeah. you know, or, or still step with nuance while it's like, you're watching them and assuming they're just in a room having a full blown argument. And it's like, they are probably somewhat where person to person, they're still on camera. They're still on camera. They're still being documented. Um, and so I don't know. I think there's a lot of that this past season of the bachelor in particular, the, the main guy, as he got towards the end of it was 
really not saying some of the best stuff. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and not not necessarily <coughs> handling it super well. And to that, you know, I mean, it's not like I would ever go in and defend any of the points he made, but it's almost like any person, if you were to take the worst argument you've ever been in in your life and have it broadcast on national television, how do you hold up? Right. You know, and it's like, it's like, yes, not good. Like, not good, not agreeing. Also, probably every other living person at some point in time has been there. Right. You know, and so I try to keep that in the back of my my brain skull. Yeah, when you're watching the old reality. Exactly. TV. Yeah, so... I don't know. I, 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 I think I think I'm trying to learn some things from reality TV with a grain of salt. With a grain of salt, yeah. <laughs> in an ounce of uh, caution. Right. Smart. Good approach. <laughs> thanks. Thanks, thanks, I thanks. I dare say. Yeah. Anyway, that's all I got. All right. Yeah. All right. So anyway, apparently I'm surprised that other people aren't doing this. As I explained all of it, I was like, this makes more sense. <laughs> I'm starting to understand that nobody else is probably approaching it this way. But you could. I encourage it. There you go. Yeah. I will say, you talked about Survivor. This present season of Survivor, which is only like three episodes deep thus far, really good. I think Survivor has been making tremendous strides forward in like changing and adapting their show for like an ever-changing and growing audience, whereas I feel like The Bachelor has just been sort of doing the same thing on repeat for a long time, and it, it does not feel fresh or new. The most shocking season yet. <laughs> the most shocking season ever, and it's just like, I don't know. I don't know. I mean... Yeah. <laughs> Wait, okay, so yeah, like take that even for example. It's like you have an arm you have a, a an army of producers, all of whom are trying to make good television, and you're trying to wade through the subtle waters of like days away from getting engaged to a person you've known for uh, a, a matter of weeks. Yeah. Like all of this, you know, the people like decided to go on the show, you know, like they're all they're all aware of of kind of the the terms of service. Yeah. You know, as to as to what's going on. But like you don't exactly have people around you your immediate echo chamber everybody you've just spent time around for months maybe doesn't have your best interests at heart right they have the viewership right yes yeah yeah so sometimes i even think it's very interesting to see all these people and then almost even watch them escape the show and then it's like oh like without all the noise <coughs> everything got better yeah what do you know how about that who knew <sighs> That's all I got. All right. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for tuning into this week's episode of The Pop. As ever, if you have any feedback at all for us, you can shoot that over to popcornculturepod at gmail.com. I always read through your emails. I'm always very appreciative of the feedback that you guys have for us. If you have any corny joke submissions, I have grown uh, surprisingly light oh, in wow. the old inbox. Maybe we so need some more corny jokes. I realize that I probably haven't had a, uh, a call to action and ask, if wow. you will, yeah. for some corn, corny jokes. That's popcornculturepod at gmail.com. If you would like to support us on Patreon, uh, you can do so at patreon.com slash popcornculture. We have a variety of super cool tiers over there, including the show after the show. Oh, no, yeah. hold on. The show after the show is a different thing. Yeah. After the, the final, final pop. pop. Which is slightly inspired by The Bachelor. It is, the yeah, after the final rose. Yeah, yep. but at the end of each episode, you say pop, pop. I so do. it's like after the final pop. Right. It's pretty good. Exactly. I, like it. I thought it was very clever. Uh, anyway, we have a couple of those episodes <coughs> that are just available if you'd like to get a sample as to what that might be like. Uh, and if you sign up even just for a month, uh, you will gain access to the entire backlog. So it's a really good bang for your buck. One last time, patreon.com slash popcorn culture. Otherwise, until next time, pop, pop. Pop.